All right, this one's a game changer, actually, is uh, pre-selecting the top-level category uh, when somebody signs up. A lot of websites out there only have one, le one top-level category, um, or they don't want their members, based on their membership level, to select their top-level category. And this is actually a feature uh, that, that, that stemmed from Webinar Wednesdays in the past, and it's finally released. And I'm going to break it down in a nutshell what it can do but I, this one I'm definitely going to pass over to Pat because he's got a million, it's like a Swiss Army knife, this feature, a million and one ways <laughs> that it, this feature can benefit your site. And again, it really depends on what your model is and things like that. But we're going to show you some of the benefits of this one. So with this one, you, can, you also want to go back to your manage products under the finance tab. And I'm just going to edit the diamond one again. And when that pops up, if we scroll down here right in the general tab, you can pre-select the top level category. So they're not gonna see this on the sign up page, but when a member signs up, it's gonna store their top level category um, in the database. So that's already gonna be, once they start filling out their, their profile with their phone number and company name, they're not gonna need to select their top level category. They can just go straight to the sub-level categories and skip that whole step. So it really streamlines the process. And just while we're here, let me talk about the second update here pre-selecting whether it's an individual or a company. So when a profile is an individual, you'll see the first and last name on the public profile page. When it's a company, it won't show that the, the first name and last name. That'll just be for your internal contact records, of the person who's kind of managing that profile for the company. So here you can pre-select the listing type company or organization. These will be hidden on the sign-up page, but it will store the information that you select. So if you wanted it to be a company or organization, and in this case, the top level category is an interior designer, um, those would, values would automatically get stored and you don't, and you could remove them from the currently where someone would select those on the, their, when they're filling out their profile information. So Pat, I want to kind of pass it over to you. And I know that the key focus is really the, the pre-selecting the top category. Can you kind of share with us your thoughts and, and what instances this becomes helpful and valuable for a website? Yeah, absolutely. And I would say this is one of the things that I've had to customize the most in the past. And it was quite a workaround for me to go in and customize that for my for, for, for different billing directories users. So I'm really excited about this update. Uh, and what it means for, for everybody on this particular webinar and, and in the future. So to me, there's a couple of different ways that you can leverage this. Uh, the easiest one to explain is probably uh, really being able to manage the type of categories people can select. Uh, I'll give you a very easy example. Um, let's say I had a directory where I was signing up schools and I was signing up teachers in this example, um, I would want to probably charge differently, thinking if you're a school, you probably have a much bigger budget than if you're a teacher on my directory. Uh, in the past, however, it's very difficult for me to charge a different rate because once you sign up on the directory, you can just select whatever category you're looking for. And the, there's many more people that are searching for schools uh, then they are searching for individual teachers. Just a, a simplistic example, right? So let me let me let me backtrack there. So just in this very simple example, so a teacher, for example, would pay ten dollars, and a school would pay a hundred dollars. And that'd be that'd be a good example. Like my my Tuffle school, our courses cost seventeen ninety nine, so one thousand seven hundred and ninety nine dollars is what an average Tuffle course costs. And in, in, in a particular uh, niche that I sell courses, so a school, I would actually charge them a couple hundred dollars a month because of the amount of money they can earn selling a course on that directory. Okay, but the problem before was let's say someone signed up for ten dollars or a hundred dollars. Let's say a school signed up for the ten dollars. The next step would be for them to select their top level category when they're creating their profile page, and they could just toggle over to being a school, and they just pay ten dollars to be a teacher. But with this, That's you're saying you can lock them in based on the plan they signed up to. They can't change their their main category. Exactly. I'm I'm guaranteeing to the people that pay a higher tier that they're going to be the only ones that can show up for people that are searching for school. So if they're searching for a TUFL course, a Spanish program, a volunteer program, the only people that will be able to check off those sub-level categories are going to be the people that pay 
the monthly fee to be a school in the first place because I'm auto selecting that for them. And a teacher that signs up for $10 a, a month or perhaps free even, uh, they're never going to be able to select that because they'll be locked into the teacher category. Gotcha. Do we want to show an example of how this works? Sure, why not? I, I, I have an example of a second scenario um, that leverages something a little bit different. Um, that, that first scenario is one of the benefits is that it allows you to charge a, a more accurate fee based on the type of categories that someone can select. So you can leverage that to earn more money for your directory. Gotcha. You want me to pass the controls over to you? Do you sure. Your example? Sure. Perfect. Sure, absolutely. Okay. All right, you should have the controls now, Pat. Okay, so the, the second scenario, something something that I really like to do for this is we all have, well, the majority of us have general users. A, a general user is somebody that would interact with a directory and would perhaps want to favorite something, bookmark content. Uh, they'll want to create a general user account. It's the user of your website. And one of the things I, I love doing is collecting data on general users that are signing up on a directory and be able to segment marketing campaigns to those general users. One of the best ways to do that is to be, be able to lock them into a category that's exclusive for general users, meaning I'm not intending for those, those categories to be searchable. Um, there may be a slight amount of customization in that, but the bottom line is in the general users section itself, you'll see that I have a top level category called interior design fan, and that is exclusive for them. I want to know what things they're interested in when they sign up. So I'll actually go ahead and I'll create an account on the fly, if you don't mind, Jason, and show people how this works. So we're going to sign up as a general user on this website. Just put in a random email. So there's there's a couple of things that we did actually. We we we've pre-selected their category to be an interior design fan, but we've also selected them to be an individual and a person. And I'll and I'll show people uh, what that means when we actually complete the profile. So oh, I need to select bicycles. I create a lot of accounts <laughs> and that's why Google makes me do a little bit more tests than most would have to do to verify my accounts, but that's okay. So now that I'm logged in and I go to my contact details form, you're going to see that there is no top level category and there is no, uh, are you a company or are you an individual? Uh, again, because we've pre-selected that at sign up. So if we do um, Steve Smith, whoops, my apologies. If we do Steve Smith and we do Smith Smith's uh, team, <laughs> we'll just invent whatever. What since I'm pre-selected as an individual, it means that my company name will not be what displays. And when I go to the next step of this setup, I'm going to be able to select categories that are exclusively set for me as a general user. So we can see here, it says Steve Smith. It recognizes me as an individual. This is good because I'm guaranteeing a company can't slip through the cracks and try to create a company profile. So if they're saying, hey, why is my company name not showing? They might send me an email and I'll say, oh, it looks like you signed up for a general user account. Looks like you want to sign up for a company account. Here's a membership tier for that. Um, there's a fee for being a company listing. This is exclusively for general users. And when we go to the listing details tab, I'm instantly in the category I'm supposed to be going into. And when I go and select my interest, this is only a general user will ever see these categories. No one else will ever see this when they're creating their profile listings. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Now, I think this listing type is uh, is non-searchable, so they're not going to have a profile page to check out. But you as the website owner can now search um, which members have selected these top-level and sub-level categories in the admin area, Pat, and then yeah, obviously I, export that list. Exactly. I use it for marketing. So if I come in here and I look at my members, 
and this is one of my favorite tools on, on Brilliant Directories that is quite underutilized, is I'm able to filter based on the categories that people selected, and I'm then able to export that. So if I want to say, I want to be able to get all of my designer fans that have an interest in um, in kitchens, and I can do a search for that, I can then export all of those general users that have an, have had ex an expressed an exact interest in that and get them to engage with my website. So it's really g great for segmented marketing materials and exporting that for a marketing campaign. Awesome. Um, I just want to, I'm going to grab the controls back for a second here. Real quick, because it is important if anybody follows the advice I gave today, there's going to be one important step that's missing, which is hiding it from the, the field. And uh, perhaps you just want to show that final step on the interior design demo. Um, because if you pre-select the top level category and you do not want your members to be able to change that top level category, there's just one minor step missing at that point, And that would be going into the form and just hiding the field so that your members are not able to edit the entry. Absolutely. So let's that's that's a good point. I'll just take a second to show that. First, let's log in as a member so we can see the what we call the best describes you field. So I'll just log in here. Oh, this is a let's just log in here. Looks like an account. And let's see if this person has the best describes you field. Yeah. So there's a top level category here. And what we want to do uh, this membership level is the interior designer contributor. So what we want to do is go to our form manager. And the name of that form is the uh, the contact details form. So I'm just going to search contact here, and it's the listing contact details member. That's generally the one that the, the members fill out. And once you're here, this is basically the form. Everything is in uh, percentage signs because they are uh, text labels. But let me scroll down here. And what you want to look for, if you're curious which one it is, it's the one that has the database variable name, profession ID. All right, and, and the field type is top level category. Um, what you can do is you can, you can delete this actually, or you can set it to, um, well, actually I would, I would recommend just kind of deleting it because if you're, if you're going to go this route, you can always add it back if you need to. But let me go ahead and uh, delete it here. And let me save the changes. So if I'm going to utilize this strategy, now if I scroll down here, the top category, if I refresh the page, it's not there anymore. It just goes company, your position. So it kind of helps streamline the process during the sign up, uh, uh, the sign up process, excuse me, of when a member is joining your site. So one less thing for them to have to worry about. But as Pat says, you want to make sure that there's there's if you're going to assign a top level category that they're signing up to that top level category. If you just have one top level category on your site and everything is nested under that, um, that's a lot easier. But if you're going to have plumbers and and tradesmen and other things like that, you want to make sure you have a specific landing page for a specific membership level sign up uh, link, and that will help uh, avoid any conflicts between who's getting assigned to which top level categories. Um, but super helpful. Uh, I know a lot of you out there are probably excited about this. It's going to make your life a whole lot easier. And there's a lot of applications for why this can be helpful.